Pool stages are done and some big teams just about scraped through to the knockout stages. Others weren't so lucky. My name's Mark, let's talk rugby. Today we're going to look at round four results, how that left the final pools and then what round of 16 matchups that actually gave us. So let's start with the results from the weekend. So, you know, round four, the final round of pool games. And on Friday night, we had eight o'clock kickoff, Glasgow versus Toulon. Really good win for Glasgow there, just stepping up to the plate when they needed to. And, you know, it's something that I think Glasgow have to do more often. Toulon, you know, they, they were at one stage like a big team in this competition of multiple um, winners of it, but it's been a while since then. And, you know, it feels like they have to, they haven't got that drive at the moment within the, the club to prioritize Europe. And, you know, hopefully that's going to change in the next few years because, you know, you like to see every team that's in the, in this competition actually believing that they've got some kind of chance of, of progressing, you know, far in the competition and giving it their all. But, you know, it was a pretty handy win for Glasgow in the end. Also, so that was in pool three and pool one at the same time we had Connacht beating Bristol Bears. So Connacht 27, Bristol 10. It was pretty close. Then Connacht pulled away. Decent end to the pool stages for Connacht uh, there. Although, you know, they're, performances up to this stage um weren't that great especially you know losing at home although you know they lost against a team um, who seemed to be you know at the moment looking like one of the best teams in the competition but at least they, they were able to give a decent send off to the competition with this win over the bears you know connacht they've been inconsistent all season and, you know, who knows now what's going to happen to them from here in European competition. But we'll talk about that in a bit later. On to the Saturday games then. So, 1 o'clock kickoff. Harlequins 47, Ulster 19. Uh, talk about inconsistent like Ulster rugby. Um, you know, it, it, they're like Jekyll and Hyde. Nobody knows, you know, what, what performance they're going to put in. Even within games, like they had that, you know, uh, they got a drubbing at Bath as well when they went over there, and they got a drubbing at home against Toulouse, and you know they did just one win in the competition at home, and that's it's just not good enough for a team of of Ulster status. But it feels like this whole season they've been like that, where you know there's there's something just not right about them. But Quinns, fair play to them. Uh, really good performance and you know they, they play a great brand of rugby um, and sometimes that kind of catches them out when when they play teams of maybe slightly higher quality than them they just give away too many um, you know opportunities to the opposition and they, you know although they have great firepower still you know um, they don't always get over the line but in this one uh, well-deserved winners and you know Ulster kind of made made it look a bit uh, closer really in the end with a couple of tries in the second half. But yeah, uh, deserve win for Quinns there. And, you know, I don't think if you're an Ulster fan, you can have many complaints about the results. You can have plenty of complaints about though the performance of Ulster and Ulster standards this year as well, um, way down on, uh, you know, last season, or especially the, the start of last season. Um, but yeah, that was in pool two. Then at the same time in pool one, we had, um, Vodacom Bulls 46, Bordeaux 40. Um, so, you know, Bordeaux have been excellent in the competition and they really, really made the Bulls work for this win. Bulls, though, you know, they're obviously, you know, newish to competition as in this their second season, but they're a team you can see with real ambition in terms of, you know, uh, going far in this competition and eventually lifting the trophy as well. I think that's the trajectory they're on. The same with the Stormers as well, that they're not here just to kind of make up the numbers. And, you know, it's a really good um, win for them and, you know, set them up 
with you know a, a decent um decent chance at least in terms of you know uh, the progression but also you know when we look at the knockout stage a bit later too on to uh then the slightly later games uh at 315 we had in pool four Leicester Tigers 10 Leinster 27 so Leicester um, took the lead there but Leinster then just took over the game and you know Leinster the building at the moment still not still not the amazing Leinster that maybe we're used to but for whatever reason I just have a feeling this year that you know um, that that progression throughout the season is something that they've needed in terms of getting their hands back on a trophy they seem to have a bit more competition in the squad as well that's really helping them i think in terms of of driving those standards and you know helping with that tradition as well under you know with a new coach in there as well um but yeah uh, both these teams um you know we're looking to you know, finish high in the pool, end up being Leinster. Uh, but, you know, Le- Leicester, they're still, you know, although they lost this one, they're still going to be a tough team, I think, in the knockout stages. On to pool two then. Um, at the same time, we had Racing 92, 48, Cardiff 26. So, you know, Racing, um, a decent result for them because last year they missed out on the knockout stages, you know, eliminated in, in the pool stages. But, um, you know, managed with this win against Cardiff now to get themselves in there. So at least they got a chance in there. And they're kind of similar to Harlequins where, you know, um, they, they play that brand of rugby where it's exciting and, um, you know, they, they've always got, you know, a, a chance because of that, because they have the ability to score lots of points if they're, you know, if, if you give them the opportunity. But, um, in terms of just consistently high levels, they're they're not quite up there with with the best of the best. But you know, um, that's you know they're making those changes now. You can see that where you know um, bringing a new in a new coach, um, one who's obviously got um, tons of experience in this competition and in producing um, you know a squad that can actually win this thing as well. Um, and I think that that's you know, big importance for them and, and being in that knockout stages just means that if they can just make some a few more progress in a couple of months until the knockout stages as well, um, you know, they could be a real threat there. Cardiff, um, you know, what can you say about them? I you know, I don't I don't think they were actually up to the level of this competition, honestly. And um it's kind of evident in the in their pool uh, performances, you know, as I said before, they're a young team, and if they keep together as a squad and develop, they could get to the point where they could be a real threat at this level, but right now, uh, just not there. On to then, um, next and then, uh, so at 5.30 in Pool 3, we had Munster 23, Northampton Saints 26. You know, Northampton absolutely bossed the first half in that one, and end up going in at half time actually down because Munster um in the final two minutes scored two tries. Northampton got a red card and a yellow card um during that period. Red card absolutely deserved. So was the yellow, but um the red card was absolutely deserved. Um <laughs> and I'm expecting a long ban for was Langdon, I think was the guy that got it. Um but what was also really well deserved was Northampton Saints win. Um the second half Smith um, his kicking just kept them in touch all the time. Then he had Courtney Laws, um, best player on the pitch, winning the penalties, winning them turnovers, getting them in position. And, you know, Munster, even though they had an extra man, they could not find um, that extra gear to be able to pull away. It's something we've seen from them a lot this year where they fall away in second halves. This happened to them again. And, you know, um, Good thing for them, well, we'll see if it's a good thing, but at least they're going to get a chance to put uh, this right, and we'll see that when we look at um, the knockout stages later. But yeah, uh, well-deserved from Saints, though, there. Um, great win for, for them coming back and getting that win. At 
the same time then in pool four we had stat front say 20 stormers 24 so stat front say um probably um one of their better performances like they they weren't great this season in the competition honestly um but made the stormers work for the win but the stormers again i said just like the bulls they got ambition in this competition and they worked hard for the win and they made sure they got it as well and you know that's the kind of thing that um you know can really benefit a team is when you win these tight ones the way that the saints did and the way that the stormers did as well it just gives that extra bit of confidence that you know even if things are going against you you can still work your way back into games and you can come up with the vital score at the right time as well on to then um pool one so eight o'clock kickoff on saturday saracen's 39 leon 24 so sarah's obviously got trashed um last time out but um back to kind of almost normal services safe for them decent win for them um and then leon they kind of looked decent early on in the pool stages and then kind of fell away towards the end as well so not great um for them you know um going on from here you know you'd rather kind of finish strong i i would um say okay on to the sunday games then one o'clock kickoff sales sharks 24 la rochelle 37 so speaking of a team that's finished really well you know la rochelle lost the first two games and if they lost this one they were out that's how important it was for them to win and they come up with the win uh, at the right time and i think they're coming into form at the right time too kind of similar to lencer in that you know they hadn't got, got the best start of the season but you know the players are starting to perform now and they're getting the the results especially away from home uh big results as well to help them out um on sorry a little bit later in the day uh 3 15 then pool two um Toulouse 31 bath 19 so bath another one of those teams that started a pool very well and kind of you know not finishing as good but you know um to lose like really hard place to go for anyone you know um including you know uh the likes of la rochelle lencer etc and get anything out of the game so you know uh it's no big surprise really to lose won that one and they're going to be a huge threat to anyone in the knockout stages as well um you know bath i think they, there's one of those teams where you know you can see if things go the right way for them they could you know work themselves into position maybe in a in a season or two where they are up there competing with the, the likes of uh toulouse or la rochelle or saracens or whoever at this level in this competition but again another one that isn't quite there at the moment on to pool three then um 5 30 kickoff so it was uh beyond 40 extra chiefs 17 so you know i expected that extra would go there and win because Bayonne, um, apart from that you know the draw in the opening round against munster they really hadn't shown anything in their other two games at all and it felt like you know at least up to this point that it was all on Munster really in that first game that you know Munster did the same thing that they did um you know before in that they just not performing for the whole 80 minutes but this one um definitely beyond's um best performance in this competition I would say their best performance in Europe because they made a debut last year and they finished windless in the challenge cup as well so stepping up to this level and getting this performance against Exeter it kind of you know it helps them then to be they're like they're at the very beginning of their journey really in in making their own european history and to beat a former winner um in that manner you know it's 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 something that they'll they'll remember i think for a long time it'll be a, you know a celebrated win for them as well um extra you know they got to this they were semi-final yeah just semi-finals last year and they had to overcome adversity and you know potentially they're going to have to do the same um this year as well but let's have a look now at the final pools so pool one top team there uh bordeaux they finished a record of uh three wins and a loss um you know a tight loss in the end but still um a loss for them um 
But yeah, they finished on 17 points. Then the Bulls in second place there with the same win-loss uh, record, but only with 15 points. So, you know, Bordeaux's ability to get those um, try bonus points um, really did help them out in that and just some stellar performances um, throughout the pool stages. But, you know, those are the top two in the pool. Next thing we had Leon with a record of two and two. And, you know, they finished on 12 points in third place. Saracens then two and two as well, but only um, 10 points uh, for them. But that was enough for them to qualify, basically qualifying with that win on the last, um, you know, the last round there. Connacht then, <coughs> excuse me, just that one win in the final round against against Bristol. Um, that gave them like a, you know, a chance of, of qualifying if Saracens lost. Um, but Saracens really delivered and kind of you knew very early on that like, you know, Saris weren't going to um, do them a, like do them a favor by losing, as it were. Um, but Connacht, not really consistent enough to be up to this level. And, you know, We'll, we'll see what happens now. They drop down to the Challenge Cups, so we'll see how they go on that. But, you know, I'm not sure how far they're going to progress because they're not consistent enough. You know, um, it's not it's not really about whether they have enough quality or not. It's about being able to deliver, you know, get that quality working for them, deliver performances every single round. I'm not sure whether they can do that or not. Bristol Bears then... Um, finished in sixth on with five points and they drop out of Europe completely. On to pool two then. Toulouse uh, leading the way there in first place. Four wins out of four, 20 points, um, you know, pretty much um, perfection, right? Uh, five points from every game, like try bonus point in every game as well. Um, they look just irresistible at the minute. Next then in second place was Harlequins. Um, you know, three wins and a loss uh, on 15 points. And they just about pip Bath, um, who finished with the same record and the same amount of points, but just points different, splitting them there. Uh, Quinn's getting, you know, th their ability to get over the try line, really, um, and get those extra extra points in their games, help them. And they, they beat them out by, by points difference of 20 points. Um, other team then that joined them there um, is Racing 92 in fourth place. And uh, they had a record of just one win and uh, three losses for eight points. So, you know, just about like I talked about in my preview, actually, of the whole competition that round about eight or nine, like uh, eight points, nine points would be the cutoff for where teams qualified uh, compared to last year as well. And that's the way it worked out, really. Um, I think we just had, we might have had one team on eight points that didn't make it, but we'll we'll see that. Um, also, Rugby Den um, in fifth place with a record of one win and three losses and uh, five match points, and they dropped down to the um, Challenge Cup. And honestly, I don't think they deserved to qualify at this anyway. So Challenge Cup, um, maybe it's somewhere where if they you know, sort themselves out. Maybe they, they can make some hay there and then come back, you know, qualify for this competition next year and maybe come back a bit stronger. But, you know, it, it I think this performance this year shows that, you know, that something needs to change with them. Uh, Cardiff Rugby then, um, you know, no wins for them, four losses and just three match points as well. Um you know, but again, I think that they're a squad with lots of potential. I just think that the the fact that they qualified by just winning the Welsh Shield uh, meant that they weren't quite up to the standard maybe of this competition. But, you know, it's fine margins as well. Um, you know, they only need to improve a little bit and suddenly they, they could maybe pull off a win or two in this competition as well. But we'll see, Can again, like Ulster, can they qualify for next year because that's what you need really in this competition is to be in it year on year on year to be able to you know see that progress improve and have players who have tons of experience playing in the competition you know you you don't want to be a team that's kind of in and out of the competition because then you don't really build that bank 
of proper experience of performing um, well in this competition. On to pool three then, uh, Northampton Saints uh, leading the way there. Four wins out of four as well for them. 18 points, um, you know, really good for them. They were pushing for that, you know, um, kind of to be in the, in the top two. Didn't quite make it in terms of the the uh, seedings, but thir- third seed is, is pretty decent for them too. They have Exeter um, just behind them there with three wins and a loss. So Exeter, you know, right up until the last, um, the, the last round really, they, you know, they, they were looking really good and, and that's probably, you know, why I was expecting really to beat Bayonne was because they were going to, uh, or they were trying to uh, pip the Saints to um, that top spot, but didn't quite work out for them. Uh, but 13 points and second in the pool is nothing to be sniffed at. Then Glasgow, a um, bit up and down for them, two wins and two losses. 10 match points finished third but at least it's progress they're into knockout stages they you know that's going to be great experience for that squad talented squad they just need to be able to perform um uh, in their you know away from home now as well in their last 16 game monster rugby same as well um you know one win a draw and two losses for nine points just about scraped through into uh the knockout stages you know with that uh basically the losing bonus point um that they got in losing at home to saints but won't be happy about the fact they lost at home and won't be happy about the fact that they don't seem to be able to to finish off games either um you know especially tough games important games so need to fix that beyond there um in fifth place one win a draw and two two losses same record as Munster but um only eight points compared to Munster's nine so they're the team I think with the most points that didn't actually make it through to the knockout stages they dropped down to the challenge cup and then Toulon there at the bottom four losses out of four and only two match points you know again a team that you know at this level at least are quite uh at at the race is kind of similar to to Cardiff, I would say, in that the you know there's there's just that you know I'm not going to say it's a big gap like it it is as I said fine margins, but the margin is enough that you know it's it's pretty much in the favor of the other teams, uh, pretty much every time for them. So a little bit of improvement maybe, or a little bit more commitment to the competition, and and maybe we could see. Um, you know something better from them in the future onto the final pool then pool four so we have Leinster at the top there four wins out of four um 19 points so not quite the, the perfect record as um as Toulouse got but you know the one uh game that they didn't uh get the bonus point in was that win away to La Rochelle which um you know, for them, just getting that win over there would have been special enough. Anyway, would they qualify first? Second end is the Stormers. Three wins and a loss and uh, 14 match points. So they're going in to knock it stages in a stronger position than they did last season. La Rochelle then, defending champions, finished third. Two wins and two losses. So, and those two wins obviously came the last two rounds to basically save them. And 12 match points for them. Uh, you know, nobody's going to want to um, have them in the knockout stages. And we're going to see who who the unlucky um, team that got them was as well. And uh, then Leicester Tigers uh, finishing fourth place, two wins and two losses as well, but just nine match points for them. And then um, finally, or not finally, sorry, fifth place, Sale Sharks, um, one win and three losses, a really talented uh, team. But, you know, just six match points, they drop down to the uh, Challenge Cup. And Stade Francais, another, you know, French team who, like Toulon, um, decent, like, you know, decent squad of players, decent team as well, but not quite at it at, at this level. And, you know, w- when um, things are going against them, we saw that they sent a very young team over to, to Leinster, um when they decided like that you know they they were kind of out already um in their own minds but they did do well that team honestly um but just not well enough 
only two match points for them and they're eliminated from European competition. So now let's have a look at the uh, the last 16. So first up is a huge game. So Saturday 6th of uh, April is you know the beginning of the round of 16. So um, one o'clock kickoff, um, or is it? Oh, it just says uh, TBC, so. Uh, but it's on um, Saturday, 6th of April anyway. So um, we have, yeah, I think all of these things have to be sorted out to kick off times or whatever. But um, Stormers versus La Rochelle. They already played once um, in this competition and Stormers won. Now it's knockout rugby though. And, you know, that changes it a little bit. La Rochelle coming to form changes a lot. Um, and it means that, you know, Stormers are going to make an impact on this competition. Well, you know, <laughs> knocking out the defending champions, um, that would be a pretty big statement for them. La Rochelle, um, you know, they got through the pool stages, but they now know that to, you know, retain their title, you know, and basically go three in a row, they've got to do it the hard way, but they're a team that are capable of doing that as well. On to the next uh, fixture then, it's um, Toulouse versus Racing 92. So all French affair in this one, Toulouse are the top seeds. Uh, Racing, you know, um, they got through there. And again, if they want to really step up in this competition, it would be a massive uh, statement for them to be able to knock out a team of, you know, Toulouse's quality, but also Toulouse's standing in the competition as well. So, you know, that's going to be an exciting fixture there. Then we, we'd have an all-English affair next, Extra Chiefs versus uh, Bath Rugby. So, you know, uh, Exeter um, made the semi-final last year, Bath, a team who, you know, from, I remember in my youth, like uh, Bath were, were a big team in England. Um, but that's, a, <laughs> my youth is a long, long time ago. Um, but of the two, like Exeter certainly would be the favorite to progress. But, you know, Bath are, are a bit of a coming uh, team at the minute. Then another repeat of a uh, pool matchup, and that's Leinster versus Leicester. Um, so Leinster won away um, in Leicester in the pool stages and now that they're at home so everybody's just thinking oh yeah obviously Leinster's going to win that but um if Leinster themselves think that or even they don't even have to think it because you will hear out of everybody's mouth it's like oh no uh we have to treat them with respect and etc 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 but um you know every, every player and coach and wherever is is taught to say that and you know, that's the mantra of give them the respect and et cetera, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's whether deep down you, you truly believe it and whether you take them. If you take a team like Leicester lightly, you're going to get turned over. So Leicester have to bring their A game. We haven't seen them anywhere near their A game um, so far this season. So they're going to have to ramp up another level um, when we get to April. Then we have another repeat. Um, Northampton Saints versus Munster. So Munster, uh, they just lost a home to Northampton Saints and Northampton had like 14 men for half of the game and actually uh, 13 men for 10 minutes or so, eight minutes or whatever it was. Um, or no, it was a full 10 minutes, right? Two minutes in the first half, eight in the second half. Um, but, you know, Northampton got to th be thinking like, well, you know, the takes so much confidence of, of having gone to Thomond and won under such difficult circumstances as well. Munster, you know, it will be uh, kind of geared up as like a revenge mission for them. But I think for Munster, it's really is more about uh, sorting out whatever is going on in that team in terms of not being able to perform in second halves of games. Um, and you're getting that right because if they can do that, then um, they've got every chance. But if they're if they're going to fall away in the second half, the way they've been doing, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of times this season, then 
you know, Saints just know that all they have to do is even the Munster are on top in the first half, just hang on in there the way they did um, in Thomond, and then um, you know, they'll get their chances in the second half. So a really interesting game there. Um, so many games that are so good as well in this one. like, um, And it feels like, you know, th- this is when the competition is really going to start, honestly. Um, next one then is uh, Bordeaux versus uh, Saracens. Bordeaux uh, did so well and came so close as well to finishing with, you know, a, a perfect record for from four. Couldn't quite do it, but playing a team now in Saracens who have plenty of, you know, uh, experience in this competition, experience in the knockout stage as well. Bordeaux, not so much, even, you know, and we've seen it in the past as well. Team can look majestic in the pool stages and then they get into the knockout stages and suddenly they're out, you know, be, before they can, you know, everybody's expecting them to con- con- continue on uh, the good work from the pool stages and it just, for whatever reason, just doesn't happen for them. And this looks like one of those, uh, potentially at least, you know, Bordeaux certainly could um, produce that performance. They've beaten some big teams already um, in this competition and, you know, another great matchup there as well. Then, um, the next, I would say, this matchup, Harquins and Glasgow Warriors, is a matchup between kind of, um, I would say, kind of hopefuls here, because neither team really have, you know, have that history of um, progress year on year in this competition. Um, but now one of them is going to make it to a quarter final, and from there. You know, you, you, you've got to feel like you've got at least some chance uh, to make it into semi final then as well. So, and two teams who both like to play uh, good rugby as well, like to throw the ball around. Um, obviously, Glasgow um, also like to score a lot of mall tries too. Um, so, we'll see, you know, which style kind of comes out on top in the end there and who um, takes. I think there's going to be, you're probably going to see a lot of turnover tries in this game too because both teams. Um, you know, like to run the ball and they're not really afraid of making mistakes. But then, you know, Quinn's uh, really good on uh, transition and Glasgow not too bad either. So I think you're probably going to see a few turnover tries in that one. The next one then, or the final one, is uh, the Bulls versus Leon. So, um, you know, Bulls, I think they, if if you had to offer them Leon at the start of... Um, of the competition, they would have been pretty happy with it. You know, they, they would have said, yeah, we, we'll take them. Um, Leon were, were decent in the pool stages without kind of sending the world alight. And, you know, they've done pretty well. You know, they're not a team who are regularly in this competition either. So to be able to be one of the French teams that progressed when, you know, arguably larger um, teams were, were knocked out and uh, larger teams than them, I should say, uh, were knocked out as well is really good. But, you know, um, it's going to be a hell of a performance if they're able to go down to South Africa and pull off a, a, an away win in the round of 16. So Bulls fans have to be feeling confident about that. But again, um, you know, you can't feel too confident in this competition, especially when we get to this stage where it feels like the, the games actually matter, whereas in the pool stages at times, it felt like some of it is just a little bit of filler. Um, simply because so many teams, like 16 teams in now into this um, stage out of the 24 to start the competition. So, you know, um, two thirds of the teams basically still in the competition. And now that we're in the uh, knockout stages, obviously that, that number is going to be halved every single round. And that's really where the jeopardy is, I think. But some great matchups there. And, you know, it's the the pool stages had some good um some good matchups in it some some uh good performances from teams as well some a few kind of shocks in there as too so in terms of you know the, the new revitalized competition etc um it the pool stages probably went as as well as they could have been hoped in terms of of entertainment and and interest and stuff like that but still I, I think 
the format kind of reduces the amount of jeopardy in there and then that takes away um, from a lot of the excitement as well but it's been a decent competition so far and you know as i said i feel like the knockout stages really in this format is where this competition really begins and i'm going to be looking forward to that but also um you know that's kind of the end of this video but i will um later on this week have something a little bit special for you guys as well so have a look out for that